The Hidden History of the Human Race. Nice to see you, Michael. Good to be here, Gary. This, um, I believe, calls into question Darwinian's theory of evolution. Is well, that correct? Y yes, Gary. Essentially, that theory says that human beings like us have been around for about 100,000 years. And before that, you would have had only ape-man-like creatures. Before that, apes and monkeys. Uh, what we found, however, when we looked into the entire history of archaeology, uh, my co-author and I did eight years of research. We looked at every archaeological discovery that's ever been made. And what we found is that there are hundreds of such discoveries that indicate human beings like ourselves have mm -hmm. been around for literally millions of years. What's been the reception to this, to this book? Oh, there's been, from the uh, spokespersons of the scientific establishment, there has been absolute outrage. You referred to, in India, the Vedic literature? Well, what, yes. What I, I was saying uh, in the beginning that we do take uh, uh, our inspiration from these uh, ancient Sanskrit writings of India. Uh, they're collectively called the Vedas. Among them are the Puranas. Purana is a Sanskrit word. It means history. Now, these histories tell of human civilizations on this planet going back millions of years. How do, we we know thought, those are, how do we know those are accurate? Well, that was our question, too. Uh, Richard Thompson and I, we thought, well, if, if there's any accuracy to, to those statements, there, there must be some factual evidence to back them up. Now, when we looked in the current textbooks, of course, we didn't find any such evidence, but we thought, well, let's look a little bit uh, further. Uh, practically speaking, archaeologists and anthropologists have buried almost as much evidence as they've dug up. In other words, or perhaps overlooked, um, cast aside. Well, yes, cast aside, uh, and, and and there have been some outright cases of um, of uh, suppression where people who have reported such things have had their careers ruined. Uh, you have talked in terms of the uh, fact that scientists don't cheat. That's a myth. You say there's actual cheating going on. Oh, that's very well documented. For example, the, the Piltdown case is a very famous case that documents that. Now, what that has to do with is early in this century, uh, there was a purported discovery of an ape man in England uh, based on a skull and a jawbone. And this Piltdown man Piltdown Ape Man was in the science textbooks for about 40 years. And then uh, suddenly it was revealed that the British Museum had tested these fossils and determined that it was a very elaborate hoax. And many people have speculated about the identity of the person who was the hoaxer. And practically all of them center on different scientists in England, such as Sir Grafton Elliot Smith or Sir Arthur Smith Woodward, uh, all very well-established scientists in England, because only somebody who, who knew the scientific ver method very well could have prepared these fossils in such a way that they would have fooled the scientific community all around the world for 40 or 50 years. So some scientist who wanted to perhaps give some evidence in favor of evolution, because there's not very much of it, uh, invented this ape man and in a very sophisticated way uh, cheated, literally. And this is admitted by the scientists themselves. And there are more examples I could give, and we document many of them in our book, The Hidden History of the Human Race. Myth number three, um, Michael, that you have written evidence that goes against human elevation or evolution is reported only by crackpots. Now, this, this is one of the standard techniques that the scientific community tries to use against anybody that reports something that goes against their ideas. Uh, they try to label them in a derogatory way without actually discussing the facts. This, um, this human person who looked like us, existed mm -hmm. millions of years ago, did not evolve from an ape. 
uh, as we are led to believe in the Darwin theory. Why has this evidence been suppressed, and what kind of evidence have you found to support this? Well, I'll give you a very good example. Now, one example from historical times is during the California gold rush days, miners were digging tunnels thousands of feet into the sides of mountains. Now, the, the rock in these mountains is over 10 million years old, so when they were digging these tunnels, they were finding human skeletons, they were finding mortars and pestles, hundreds of them at dozens of locations. Now, all these were gathered together, reported to the scientific world by J.D. Whitney, who was the state geologist of California. And he published a massive book about them uh, by Harvard University. Harvard University was the publisher. Now, what happened to these artifacts? Why aren't they on display in museums? Why aren't our children taught about them in schools? There was a very powerful anthropologist at the Smithsonian Institution named William H. Holmes. And he said to Whitney, you, Dr. Whitney, if you had understood the theory of human evolution as we understand it today, you would have hesitated to announce your conclusion, namely that human beings existed millions of years ago, despite the imposing array of facts with which you were confronted. In other words, simply because the facts didn't fit the theory, the facts had to go, and so did Professor Whitney. Mm -hmm. What possible advantage would there be in that? Well, power, prestige, money, there's a lot riding on it. Uh, if any, if even one of the hundreds of cases that we document in the hidden history of the human race were found to be true, accepted, that would mean that everything we've been told about human origins and antiquity for the past 150 years is simply not true. And I don't think that the current establishment is ready to admit that. How long ago do you think that, that this evidence was suppressed? I mean, is this something that's been going on for, for years and years? Yes, this has been going on for about 150 years. Well, gee, don't we have all these machines now that can look at the footprints or the bones mm -hmm. or whatever, and that will just tell us how old it is? Oh, this is, this is a very common perception. We have such faith in technology and those who employ it uh, that we, when we hear about things like carbon-14 testing or potassium-argon testing. We think it really is a very simple process, almost like you pop something in the microwave and right. boom, it comes out. Uh, it's not like that at all. These are very complicated procedures. Uh, what I found in practice is, is that scientists may run several tests on the same piece of bone. Some of the ages will be very great, some very small, and they will tend to pick the date to publish in their scientific literature that most fits the idea that they start out with about how old the fossil should be. Mm -hmm. Now that, that often happens. Uh, we've placed spokespersons from the scientific community on a little bit of a pedestal uh, and we may need to give them this, the same uh, sort of uh, uh, treatment that we would give to spokespersons from other, other uh, groups in society. I'm here, and um, doggone it, I, I want to get the information out. I want to get at the truth. I guess that's what it is. Why does Dr. Steen McIntyre feel the need to protect her artifacts from her more mainstream colleagues? Why are contradictory findings being met with contempt instead of excitement? Some researchers charge it's because these new findings would turn modern anthropology on its head. This is actually the subject of a presentation I shall be making in New Delhi uh, to the World Archaeological Congress uh, called Puranic Time in the Archaeological Record. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 the concept of co time that you do find in the Puranas is, in fact, cyclical. Now, what mu what uh, might one predict from that? Say if you have civilizations coming and going uh, over vast periods of time, uh, perhaps you might have humans and other uh, ape-man-like creatures coexisting. I, I will mention that the Puranas do talk about intelligent races of ape-like creatures uh, that use stone tools. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not an idea that came in with uh, Darwin. It's been there for thousands mm -hmm. of years. Now, what might one predict from that? Uh, 
if you were to predict what archaeologists might find, uh, you would say, well, they would tend to find a very bewildering mixture of anatomically modern human fossils, ape-man-like fossils, uh, uh, crude stone tools, uh, articles uh, indicative of a higher level, higher level of culture, all sort of mixed up and going back. I think you might also predict that given the uh, biases of investigators towards a linear progressive idea of time with things beginning in a very simple state and progressing in a linear fashion to a more advanced state uh, that they might edit mm -hmm. that record mm -hmm. to conform to their linear progressive biases. Mm -hmm.